welcome back to the class on a power semiconductor right in this lecture we are going to discuss about the four quadrant operation of a dc shunt motor with ac to dc converter ac to dc converter is nothing but a dc suppose between the motor and the supply if we take the fully controlled converter it is only giving a two quadrant operation it does not give the four quadrant operation now how we are going to achieve this four quadrant operation means by means of a dual converter the dual converter is nothing but a two fully controlled converters are connected anti parallel to the load those are nothing but a dual converter by means of dual converter you can get the four quadrant operation for the dc shunt motor now we are going to see what is a dual converter what are the different uh, types of dual converters are existing practically dual converter is a one in which two fully controlled rectifiers are connected anti parallel to the load there are two types of dual converters are there one is non circulating dual converter in this only one converter is operating at a time for getting any quadrant of Not, nothing but forward motoring or braking reverse motoring or braking it requires a delay time to move from one mode of operation to another mode of operation. suppose if you want to move the forward motoring to the reverse mode you have to provide some delay time between the forward motoring to the reverse mode it is simple in construction and cost also the circulating current dual converter in this both converters are operating simultaneously it requires a inductor to limit the circulating current it is a complex circuit moreover it is a costly also now initially we are going to see the non circulating dual converter next we are going to see the circulating current dual converter the four quadrant operation of dc shunt motor with a non circulating current dual converter here we have taken a three phase fully controlled converter this is converter 1 this is converter 2 the firing angle of this converter we have taken as alpha 1 firing angle of this converter is taken as alpha 2 so both are connected in a anti parallel to the armature of a dc motor so in this case we have taken the armature of a dc motor as a load this is the positive direction of the load current This is the positive direction output voltage. Upper one is plus, lower one is minus. Both are shown with a red. Now, how we are going to achieve the four quadrant operation? On the x-axis we have taken the voltage, and the y-axis we have taken the current. This is the first quadrant where the load power is positive. Nothing but the motor will be running in a forward forward mode. So, how we are going to achieve this forward mode? Operate the converter one. Don't operate the converter two. Nothing but we should not operate the firing first. If we maintain the firing angle of the first converter less than the 90 degree, the average output voltage given by the converter becomes a positive. Nothing but V zero one. This is upper one is positive, lower one is negative. Here the positive is connected to the positive, here the negative is connected to the negative of the lower voltage. So the voltage is positive. This converter is allowing the current only from the top to the bottom. So the load current also is positive. So it gives only the first quadrant of it. Suppose we maintain the firing angle more than the 90 degree. The average output voltage given by the converter one will become say negative. Nothing but a lower terminal is positive, whereas the upper terminal becomes negative. But this converter is allowing the current only from the top to the bottom only. There is no change in the direction of the current, but the voltage is negative. When the voltage is negative and current is positive, the load power becomes a negative. Nothing but a breaking to the forward mode. That is represented in the second quadrant of this. Now. In third quadrant operation, where the voltage and current is negative, the power becomes a positive, but the motor will be rotating in a opposite direction to the first quadrant. Now, how we are going to achieve this third quadrant means? Now we have to operate the converter two only. We should not operate the converter one. Suppose for the converter two, if we maintain the firing angle less than the 90 degrees, I think about alpha two less than the 90 degrees. The average output voltage given by this converter becomes a positive. Nothing but this is positive, this is negative, which exactly opposite to the load voltage because this is the load voltage which is shown with the red. This plus is connected to the minus, where the minus is connected to the plus. Nothing but output voltage becomes a negative. This converter is allowing the current only from the bottom to the top, so the load current also the negative. So the power becomes a positive. The machine will be operating as a motor, but it will be rotating in a Reverse that. Now suppose if you want to apply the braking for this motor, then you have to make the firing angle of the second converter 
is greater than the 90 degree the average output voltage given by the converter becomes a negative nothing but a, this terminal becomes a plus where this terminal becomes a minus that is exactly same as the load voltage nothing but a voltage is positive where the current is a negative because this converter is allowing the current from only from the bottom to the top. load power becomes a negative which gives the regenerative breaking a reverse mode that is representing the fourth quadrant of it so in this manner we can get the four quadrant operation of a dc shunt motor by means of a non circulating current dual converter this is the circuit diagram for the circulating current dual converter the only difference here is the inductor between the non circulating and circulating this inductor is limiting the circulating current this is the converter one this is the converter but here for getting any quadrant operation nothing but a motoring operation or braking operation whatever it is but operate the two converters simultaneously now what is the condition to operate these two converters that will do the firing angle of this converter is alpha 1 the firing angle of this converter is alpha 2 v01 is nothing but the average voltage given by the first converter that is equal to 3 vml by pi cos alpha 1 The average output voltage given by the second converter V02 equal to 3 VML by pi cos alpha 2. If you apply the KVL in this loop, V01 plus V02 equal to zero. So V01 equal to minus of V02. Now substitute the values of V01 and V02. We are getting the 3 VML by pi cos alpha 1 equal to minus of 3 VML by pi cos alpha 2. So 3 VML, 3 VML get cancelled. We have a cos alpha 1 equal to minus cos alpha 2. So cos alpha 1 equal to cos pi minus alpha 2. Alpha 1 plus alpha 2 equal to pi. Nothing but the sum of the firing angles of the converter 1 and the converter 2 is equal to 180. That is the condition of how we are going to operate the two converters simultaneously. Suppose if we take the firing angle alpha 1 equal to 30 degrees. Now alpha 2 becomes a 180 minus 30 degrees that we are getting the 1 to 3 degrees. The converter 1 is operating as a rectifier, whereas the converter 2 is operating as a inverter. So in that manner, we have to operate the two converters simultaneously so that it can able to give any quadrant of. Why the circulating current is passing through the converter? Even though the average output voltage is given by the first converter and second converter are equal, but there is a difference in the instant and the voltage is. Between these two converters, due to the difference in instantaneous voltage given by the these two converters, there is a circulating current will be passing through the two converters in this time. The resistance of the path is very very low, so this current will be higher to limit that current. We are keeping one inductor. That inductor is nothing but a circulating current limiting inductor. On the x-axis we have taken the voltage, on the y-axis we have taken the current, and the first quadrant is nothing but a motoring operation. So. The current is possible means to be load current should be passes only from the top to the bottom. That is possible only by the current should be supplied by the converter one only, and voltage also should be the positive. So the firing angle of the converter one should be less than the 90 degrees, whereas the firing angle of the converter should be greater than the 90 degrees because the sum of these two should be equal to the 180 degrees. That is the condition. So to achieve the first quadrant operation, forward motoring. The alpha one should be less than the 90 degrees. Alpha two should be greater than the 90 degrees. Now the two converters are operating. The converter one is supplying a load current from A phase. See here, A phase the current is supplying load again written to the B phase in this manner. So the how the circulating current is passing means because this side also one one nothing but two one and these two devices are on. The same instant because this converter is operating at a more than the 90 degrees. Now the circulating current is starting from the A phase. See here, A phase T1 inductor. See here, six written to the T phase. Now phase circulating current is starting from the A phase T6 written to the B phase. In this manner, it is circulating. This red line is representing the load current. Whereas this blue line is representing the circulating current. The circulating current is not passing to the load; it will be only circulating between the supply and the converter. This is passing only due to the difference in instantaneous voltage given by the 
these two convert this is the way in which the circulating current is passing in the circuit so one more important point here is that in the first quadrant the converter one is supplying both load current as well as circulating current but converter two is carrying only the circulating current it is not carrying any load current that is the point what you have to observe if you want the breaking in a forward direction nothing but firing angle of first converter should be greater than the 90 degree obviously the firing angle of the second converter should be less than the 90 degree because alpha 1 plus alpha 2 equal to 90 degree that is represented in the second quadrant of this the load current is supplied by the converter 1 only but the output voltage of the converter 1 is negative so it gives the regenerative breaking for the motor the second converter is operating but it carries only circuit now if we want to get the third quadrant operation now we have to change the direction of the armature so how we are going to change the direction of the armature current means now the second converter has to supply that current then only the armature current will be so we have to maintain the firing angle of the second converter should be less than the 90 degrees where the alpha one greater than the 90 degrees now this converter is operating as a rectifier this converter is operating as a inverter operation now the load current will be supplied by the second converter first converter is carrying only the circulating current so in this manner the third quadrant operation we are getting suppose if you want to get the breaking in a reverse direction now you have to make this alpha 2 greater than the 90 degrees alpha 1 less than the 90 degrees then the load current will be supplied by the second converter only the first converter is carrying only the circulating current which gives the breaking in a reverse direction in this manner if you operate means we can move the motor from one mode of operation to another mode of operation without any delay suppose if you want to change the operation from forward motoring to the reverse motoring directly you can change nothing but a say alpha 1 is less than the 90 degrees here alpha 2 is greater than the 90 degrees. here alpha 2 is less than 90 degrees alpha 1 greater than the 90 degrees. nothing but a slowly you have to decrease this firing angle slowly you have to increase this firing angle so that alpha 1 plus alpha 2 equal to 180 degrees so without giving any delay you can change the operation of the motor from forward motoring to the reverse motoring the, the current rating of the converters will be higher when compared to the non circulating current dual converter because already you have seen quadrant the converter one is carrying a load current as well as a circulating current so the rating of this converter is more when compared to the non circulating current dual converter where the converter is carrying only the load current there is no circulating current there because we are operating only the one converter so in this manner we can achieve the four quadrant operation by means of a circulating current dual converter thank you very much if you have any doubt you can ask me directly or you can ask in the comment box youtube channel so that i am always available to answer all your